Next on BYU Sports Nation, Sweet 16 bound for BYU basketball? Which national analyst is totally buying that possibility for BYU? It's a ball night for BYU at LMU. The Cougars are heavy favorites, but what to watch tonight? Plus, BYU football opted for a youth movement in the 2019 season and played a ton of freshmen. What does it mean for the future? Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Thursday, February 13th, wherever and however you have chosen to connect Welcome, friends. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with historian of DeKalb, Illinois, Jerem Jordan. Well, in 1846, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Mormon pioneers were going through, and they thought, let's not stop here. Let's keep going. Let's go ahead and play a football game about yeah. 180 years from now in Chicago instead, or just south of Chicago. If Brigham had kept going to California, would BYU have been in the Pac-10? <laughs> I think about these things. <laughs> Would would BYU be in a power conference if BYU had not stopped in Salt Lake? What are those internet clips that came out uh, a few years back that kind of caught a rage of like the the what if uh, possibility within what if BYU football hadn't won the national championship? You know what I'm talking about? Like where no. these alternate realities. You remember those alternate realities? No, that were produced by Bleacher Report. There are a million in the multiverse. Yes. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I don't actually believe religiously in the multiverse, but that <laughs> idea is interesting. <laughs> there is no multiverse in today's show lineup. Just reality. Stats guru Ken Pomeroy, college basketball man, will join us to discuss what BYU basketball is doing best by the numbers. Jonathan Tavernari on if he agrees with what college basketball insider Jay Billis has to say about the Cougars right now. And well, there are some lofty compliments. Plus, our and one picks for BYU-LMU tonight. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Tough one here. BYU junior linebacker Chaz Ayu was arrested on February 9th and charged with suspicion of DUI. Ayu recorded 31 tackles, a sack, had an interception and a forced fumble for the Cougars in 2019. Men's basketball plays at LMU tonight with pregame on BYU Radio at 10 Eastern time. I'll have that for you. BYU won the first matchup in Provo 63-38. Cougars continue to lead the nation in three-point shooting at 42.6%. BYU women's basketball hosting St. Mary's tonight at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, live on BYU TV. Big game for the Cougars who are currently tied with San Diego for second place in the West Coast Conference standings. Like the men, it's about getting that second seed and having a double bye. Junior Paisley Johnson, one of two players scoring in double figures for the Cougars at 14.1 a game, along with Brenna Drollinger at 11.6 a game. Eric Mika records his 13th double-double yesterday with 19 points and 11 rebounds for the G League Stockton Kings in a win over the Raptors 905. Mika's back in action tonight against the Delaware Blue Coats. Not to be confused with the Red Coats. Wow. Okay. Blue Coats are coming. What? They're... All rise and wow. shout. It's time for What's Trending, presented by Trio Senior Living. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. Oh, how sweet it would be for BYU basketball. Listen to this from ESPN college basketball insider and expert Jay Billis, who has BYU at number 28 in his latest rankings. And I quote, the Cougars are senior dominated, and that's always a difficult proposition for opponents in March. With Yoli Childs up front and TJ Haas and Jake Toulson in the backcourt, the Cougars are going to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015 and have a good chance to do some damage once they get there. Billis has BYU as a potential Sweet 16 contender. We want to know what you think. Join us on the topic by voting on the following question at vote.byutv.org. We'll have live results throughout the show. And, Jerem, do you agree with Jay Billis? Is BYU a Sweet 16 contender? Probably, yeah. Uh, seven seniors, number one three-point shooting team in the country, third in uh, total field goal, you know, overall field goal percentage, second in effective. BYU shoots the ball well. They played really well this year. Has BYU lost some games they should have won? Sure. Has BYU played some tough competition to give us an idea of whether they could hang with uh, some of the best in the country? 
BYU's played three games against top four teams in the net, and BYU played a tight one with San Diego State. The other two weren't close at all with Gonzaga and Kansas. So yes and no, right? Um, it depends on the matchup. If BYU's in an 8-9 um, and you match up with a San Diego State type, yeah, BYU could hang in that game and perhaps upset them. But against a Kansas or a Gonzaga type, probably not. That's what we've learned so far. Granted, that was a while ago. San Diego State was game two. Without Kansas Yoli was Childs. game five or six. Without Yoli Childs. Right, yeah. Gonzaga without, without Yoli, Yoli Childs. Childs. <laughs> so I, I think if BYU's not an 8-9, yeah, because you don't want to play the one. But if BYU is something else... Certainly, and it has everything to do with the sense of urgency that BYU has, with the culture that the coaching staff has cultivated, and the fact that BYU can shoot the lights out. That means you can be in any game, because if BYU continues to shoot the way they're shooting and have double-digit threes every game and shoot 46.2% to lead the country, yes, they can be in any game. Yet, if BYU wins one game, I'm happy in the NCAA tournament. If BYU makes it to a Sweet 16, then this is exactly what Yoli Childs would have prophesied when he came back, which is, we will make this a special season, and that certainly would be very special. When you look at seedings and matchups, those to me are the most important things when you get into the NCAA tournament. Like, sometimes there are just bad matchups for basketball teams. Look at BYU with Jimmer Fredette and Jonathan Tavernari and Noah Hartsock. When they played Texas A&M in that 8-9 game, it was a terrible matchup for BYU. just didn't work. So if BYU gets a favorable matchup, avoid the 8-9 game. A 7 seed, a 10 seed, heck, an 11 seed. What is it with the 11 seeds making these magical runs? George Mason does it in 2006. Loyal Chicago does it as an 11 seed. Look at the VCU. Look at the road. 11 beats a 6, and then... Beats a 3. Beats a 3 or a 14. I think in one of those instances, a 14 had beaten a 3. They get to the Sweet 16. Now you believe you're on a roll. You're making shots. Why not? It's Confidence is an amazing thing. So it's about seedings and matchups if BYU is to go on this magical run in the NCAA tournament. I don't think BYU is going to fall to as low as an 11 or 12 yeah, seed. Yeah, I don't think so either. At this juncture, it's probably a 7 seed, somewhere between at best 6 and at worst an 8 or a 9. Hoping BYU avoids a bad loss and can beat St. Mary's in a West Coast Conference semifinal, likely if it comes to that, and just maybe bump up to a 6 seed, stay on that 7 seed line. But BYU is capable of beating a 10 seed and then – who knows, against a two or a three seed, the way that BYU shoots the ball. It's about seedings and matchups at this point. The worst possible scenario is if BYU gets an eight or nine. Oh, that would be the worst. It's an even matchup, and then you play a one. Yeah, and not to say oh, that BYU isn't on. capable of hanging with a one seed, right? You just talked about BYU about having hanging played. in this situation. It's winning or not. Seedings right? and matchups. Yeah. yeah. Topic two, tonight's round two with LMU and then San Diego on Saturday. There are two teams. These are two teams that Ken Pomeroy says BYU is going to beat by 12 and 14. So what are you watching in these two games? Well, I'm watching to see if BYU can indeed blow out two teams on the road that on paper they should. At this point, style points do matter. The com- Up to 10 in that. Yeah. I, I think that the committee is watching BYU now. They have more attention. They've been watching all year. They have more attention now compared to even the beginning of the year than they've had in the last five years because they're a legitimate just outside the top 25 team. They're inside the top 25 of the net. There's, there are more eyeballs. There's more attention just because BYU is playing a good brand of basketball. They're one of the most efficient offensive teams in the country, if not the most, depending on which metric you're looking at. I'm watching to see if BYU can, can, can continue the momentum and continue to play at a high level on the road. Uh, th- these are teams that BYU should blow out. Can they get a big lead and keep a big lead, Jeremy, and not let things get weird? because we've seen that trend come into play on the road. I know LMU and San Diego are not San Francisco, but I watched St. Mary's almost lose to a terrible San Diego team. I expect BYU to not do that. I expect BYU to show up and prove that they are the best team early on and maintain that type of consistency throughout the game. Put the whole game together on the road. So, What does that mean? Win by f- beat the spread that Ken Pomeroy is putting out. Beat it. None of this, it's close. BYU's up by four with four minutes to go. No, none of that. I want this game to be in hand with eight minutes to play, where it just doesn't feel like there's any way that LMU or San Diego are going to come back and beat BYU. So be in control early and keep control against teams 
you should beat on the road. That's what I'm watching for. Also, what the heck is Mark Pope going to do with Gavin Baxter? And how will he factor play into more? these games this week? How much more is he going to play him? Yeah, if he plays three minutes, what's the point of this? Right? I expect what's him to play him more. Him for the, yeah, yeah. It, like, he should continue to play more because the hope is that he can give you 15 minutes in meaningful games at the end of the season, right? Is, is that, he conditioned is to do so because he has been sitting out so long? Why bring him back if he's not? Like, I, I'm confused. If BYU doesn't bring him... Why isn't he conditioned? He's been able to run. The shoulder hasn't prevented running. It's just been contact, right? So if he's if he's not in shape, like what are we, what are we doing here? I expect BYU to avoid quad three upsets. Gonzaga goes on the road and still plays close games, right? Sometimes it's like at San Francisco or whatever. Um, if if BYU plays a close game, I'm not opposed to that. Just get out of there with the win, right? Get two wins, move on. Continue to get quad three and quad four wins and not have any losses, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. So he's 12-0 in quad three and four. BYU does not have a quad four left on the schedule right now. Uh, they have four quad three, so avoid that. Continue to improve. Continue to be efficient, right? BYU is fifth in offensive efficiency. Continue to be that team, right? Continue to shoot the ball well. Jake Toulson's ankle. Get that healthy. I don't want to see Jake Toulson playing 30 minutes a game. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. I want him to be able to be full go when Gonzaga comes to town next Saturday, by the way. That's coming up fast. And then, of course, stay healthy for everybody else. No more dislocated fingers. No more ankle sprains. Uh, Things happen, but hopefully BYU can uh, have some luck and avoid those things. Because finally, BYU is getting to a point where they're full go, and we're seeing just how good BYU can be. Makes you wonder how much hindrance there is in the healing of Jake Toulson's ankle when he is playing heavily on it. Like how much faster would he heal if he were playing more limited minutes? Or does he feel fine? I, I don't know. That, that's, you bring up a good point. It's something to watch. He didn't practice Tuesday. And, and he's been kind of held out and been gaming um, – not video games, actual games. <laughs> BYU, yeah, BYU needs him next weekend against Gonzaga to be his best. It's not against LMU in San Diego, right? He's been playing NBA 2K. <laughs> they used to have college Joel basketball Embiid. versions of that. Thanks, Ed O'Bannon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, avoid the quad three losses. Look impressive. I, I, I'd like to see BYU just look dominant in these two games. That's ideal. I want two wins. I'm not. I'm not uh, worried yeah, about. Yeah, sure. Win, that wins part. the most, but I, I would love to see BYU not struggle the way that St. Mary's did against San Diego. That was unsettling for sure for the Gales. Yeah, didn't, yeah didn't I, hurt I, them I, in net that much. Still, it, style points matter. Okay, on to BYU football. The Cougars played a ton of freshmen in 2019. More freshmen than any other college football team, and won seven games. Beating the likes of Yay, seven. Tennessee, USC, <laughs> Boise State. Had some quality wins on that schedule, but like young teams, there are some head-scratching losses too. Toledo, USF, Hawaii in the bowl game. That's what young teams do. So, Jerem, does the fact that BYU started more freshmen than any other college football team give you more hope for the upcoming 2020 season? The hope is that these freshmen continue to improve and, and get better, right? Playing a lot of freshmen provides an excuse for losses. It does. Oh, that's why BYU was 7-6. They had to play a lot of freshmen. Well, what's wrong with the juniors and seniors? That, that would be my question. Like, what happened? Was it injuries? Was it ineptitude? Why is that? Because when you recruit, hopefully you can have – doesn't BYU have this advantage of 25-year-old seniors? Like, wh- where's the advantage, right? If you're having to play a bunch of freshmen, that's good for future development, but it's oftentimes bad for the present. And last season was disappointing. It was 7-6. and six. Certainly those three good wins you mentioned, uh, top 35, but there were some disappointing losses as well. Uh, does it give me hope? Um, hope that BYU is going to have more than seven? No. Um, the schedule looks hard, and BYU is bringing back the same players that won, uh, went seven and six. Hopefully an upperclassman, Zach Wilson, and uh, a, a veteran running back group can continue to improve. Hopefully uh, these freshmen continue to make that jump. Um, and you hope they don't peak at that point. Like we had some guy like Ross Oppo was an amazing player as a freshman. That was kind of the, the top of the mountain for him. The, the hope is that you continue to get better. So yes and no. I have mixed emotions about it. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad thing, right? It's, to play the most freshman is a bad thing in my opinion. But to watch them excel to a degree. I thought the BYU had some 
really good performances yeah. from Fresh last sure. year. Yeah, I, I just I the goal is to not have to do that because that means you have a vet. Like if BYU basketball were freshman heavy, it would be a very different season, right? If they're senior heavy and they're awesome. True, uh, but there were growing pains that maybe helped them get to this point. I don't know. It, it's if how, how if you know? that happens, then it was worth it. Um, but what's what's going to be the payoff for all these freshmen playing this year? Is it a ten win season in the next three years? If so, then we, then we could say, yeah, hey, that was worth it, probably. Yeah, too soon to know. But if too it doesn't happen, know. then what's the point? For me, too soon to know in twenty twenty. You know what really gives me hope for twenty twenty is that Zach Wilson is not coming off of shoulder surgery and will have an off season with a healthy right arm. That's where I am placing it's February. Let's hope, hope that's in the case. BYU football <laughs> is in the right arm, the healthy right arm and shoulder of Zach Wilson. I think he will be a different player his junior season, let, not having hope, to let's worry hope about so, that. Okay, he, again, he wasn't hope. very good. Yes, let's hope so. My hope for next season is largely on the right arm and right shoulder of Zach Wilson in that he doesn't have to rehab in a hurry and try and come back probably too soon from a thumb injury. Those are the things I'm placing hope on. Yeah. Hashtag BYUSN if you'd like to join that conversation or our question of the day. Is BYU basketball a Sweet 16 contender? Vote.byut. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. Why or why not? We're only going there because Jay Jay, Billis took us there. Oh, we decided to go there, though. Jay Billis took the conversation there. We're saying the word Sweet 16. Are we doing the same thing we did with the Lone Peak 3? What, what, What are we doing here? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At the Shakespeare answers on Twitter. If the BYU coaching staff and Gavin Baxter didn't believe BYU is a Sweet 16 contender, would they have been willing to burn his red shirt? Putting in Baxter against San Francisco told me all I needed to know about this team. They are all in, and so am I. Yeah, he just needs to play more minutes, right? I, and three minutes is like, oh, okay, it was just dipping your toe in. Uh, let's continue to see him play some more. We're running out of real estate here. There's what, five games left in the regular season? Is that what it is? And hopefully two in the West Coast there's, Conference tournament. There's yeah, just hardly any game. Let's go. Is, we got we to gotta sprint. Yeah, five games left. Like most likely, season. the eighth game from now will be an NCAA tournament game. Let's go, baby. Okay. Is BYU a Sweet 16 contender? Uh, yeah, 28% yes, 24% no, and then the rest mixed. So, yeah. Boat.byutv.org. More updates on that poll later. Coming up, Jonathan Tavernari and the Cougars plight three weeks out from today. WCC tournament. And college basketball stats guru Ken Pomeroy on what the Cougars are doing best by the numbers. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tonight, Women's Hoops is on BYU TV, 9 Eastern time against St. Mary's Big Game. Cougars tied for second in the WCC, fighting for that double bye, 9 Eastern, BYU TV. Live from Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. We welcome in on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline a man who has been on the program a number of times, friend of BYU Sports Nation, college basketball stats guru Ken Pomeroy. Ken, how's your basketball consumption rate these days? It's it's pretty healthy, fellas. Uh, Actually, just to give you an example, last night uh, I closed the evening by watching Long Beach State at Hawaii. uh, the live feed from the Hawaii website. So it was a, it was a 10 p.m. <laughs> mountain tip. And uh, I, it was all I could do to not tweet to the world about a, a strategic blunder that Hawaii head coach Aran Ganat made at the end of the game. I, that's, how, that's how plugged in I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Big West hoops, right? <laughs> Absolutely, legit. yeah. It's legit. Uh, BYU certainly in a, it's one of its best spots. It's been since Jim or Fredette in 2011, uh, all the way up to number 16 in Ken Palm right now. Uh, it, we always ask you this, but remind the people what goes into your ranking on KenPom.com. Yeah, it's uh, taking every team that uh, taking taking every team's offensive and defensive efficiency for the season. So the points they score per possession, points they allow per possession. We're removing the pace that they play at, so we're not getting influenced by just bulk points scored if they play at a fast pace or few points allowed if they play at a slow pace. Uh, 
And we are adjusting that for the strength of the competition, when the game was played, where the game was played, all that good stuff. There's a few other goodies there to try to handle uh, runaway scoring margins and things like that and just really get the essence of how good a team should be going forward. So BYU up to 16. What have you noticed in terms of the difference from a BYU team in the last four years that hasn't made the NCAA tournament to one that will make the NCAA tournament this year? Well, for the most part, it starts on the offensive end. Their offense has just been elite this year. I'm ranked fifth in the country uh, in terms of adjusted offensive efficiency. Uh, And, you know, that starts with really the three-point shooting, the shooting in general. uh, Three-point shooting obviously tops in the country, but shooting in general has been great. Uh, Then they don't commit turnovers, and they just rely on those two things pretty much solely offensively, and it has worked out really, really well. The defense has been good. It's ranked 76. That's pretty much in line with if you look at like a six, seven year average for the team past few years, pretty normal. But the offense has really taken off and uh, and just been explosive. Ken, when you look at the numbers, we're talking about all of the things that BYU is doing well. Where do the Cougars need to make an improvement to, uh, to make this season a special one? Well, I, I do think it's the, the defensive end. You know, when you look at uh, the games that they've struggled offensively, you know, especially against quality opponents, and their schedule's been kind of weird because they haven't, you know, they haven't. There's this gap. They play, they've either played, you know, the, the best teams in the country, or then the next level is is maybe a little bit further down. But when they have played the best teams in the country, and they've struggled offensively, you know, the defense hasn't really been able to keep them in games uh, or allow them to win games, and that's really the issue. You know, I I always focus on the two point percentage defense because that's really how defense works, I think. You know, it's inside out. If you can't stop people at the rim or in the paint, then you don't really have much chance of, of being an elite defense. And that's where the Cougars have struggled. They're ranked 215th in the country right now in two-point percentage defense, uh, allowing 54 or 50.4% of two-pointers to be made. And um, they'll have to get better at that. If they can improve that, then then things get, get really exciting. Not that they aren't exciting right now, but uh, that would be taking things to the next level. Five games left in the regular season. BYU predicted to win four of those five. Uh, the one is Gonzaga, who is the number two team in the country, uh, at least in the coaches' poll or the AP poll. Yet you have that as a two-point game, and BYU with a 43% chance to win. Why do you think that game's going to be close in Provo? Well, I think we can start with the fact that the game is in Provo. That is a, that's a big, big plus. Uh, it's, uh, it, I mean, it's a really exciting matchup. Uh, both of these teams, you know, Gonzaga is really similar to BYU in terms of like the makeup of the team statistically. They're just better at just about everything, as you might imagine. Uh, Gonzaga's offense is, is ranked first in the country. Their defense is 33rd. So like BYU, they're driven by their offense. They're just, their offense is better. Their defense is a little better. Um, they're the rare offense that does everything well. So, you know, we talk about BYU basically just depending on shooting and, and not committing turnovers. Well, Gonzaga does that, but they also get offensive rebounds. They have a really big front line, as usual. They draw a bunch of fouls, and so um, so they're a, they're a handful. But yeah, playing in Provo, I think, is the the big equalizer. Obviously, having Yoli Child this time around is uh, a big help as well. I mean, those two factors are enormous. And I think the one difference between these two teams is the three point shooting. Gonzaga is a good three point shooting team. They just don't take a lot of threes because their lineup is a little more traditional in terms of playing a couple of bigs on the court. Uh, BYU, obviously, a high-volume three-point shooting team. And whenever you have that, uh, there's the chance to have a, a really good offensive night. And so, um, so it's gonna, I think it's going to be a really fun game. You know, up-tempo game. Gonzaga plays really up-tempo. Uh, should be a high-scoring. Should be a close affair with a, a lot of point scores. I'm really looking forward to it. Ken, I'm putting on the blue goggles uh, when I ask this question, but let's go there. How would a hypothetical win over Gonzaga impact BYU's standings in your rankings? Yeah, it just depends on how the game plays out. I mean, so we just established that uh, I'm anticipating a close game. So I think that's one thing to keep in mind is that if it is a close game, then there wouldn't be much change in the ratings. Uh, home court advantage matters, and uh, if BYU is the, to win a two-point game, uh, they might get a small bump. But, uh, again, it wouldn't be a huge surprise, at least in, in, in my system. You know, if they won the game uh, the way Gonzaga won the game, so okay, and then it's a different story, and, you know, you could see – uh, BYU move up into the top 10 or so. I mean, these teams are pretty bunched up, you know, once you get past uh, really the top four teams, top five teams in the country, you know, things get bunched up from six through 20. So 
uh, depending on whether that holds or not, uh, a dominant win can really kind of propel you up the rankings uh, maybe a bit more significantly than you might think. With the numbers, who sticks out individually, Ken? For the Cougars, well, uh, I mean, certainly Yoli Childs, I think his impact, uh, when you look at the numbers, his impact, you know, obviously scores a lot. He, he, you know, he's a great rebounder, but when you break down kind of the advanced stats, his usage, what we call his usage, is really high. So he's the guy that uh, you know ends up with the, the ball in his hand at, at, at the end of the possession uh, way more often than any other Cougar. And uh, he's been you know pretty efficient in that role. But uh, just the fact that he uh, has the ball so often and they trust him so much really just opens things up for the guys on the perimeter. And so I think if you're talking about you know who is the most important Cougar, uh, it, it would be Yoli from that standpoint i mean you don't need the advanced stats i guess necessarily to back it up but uh you know you just look at obviously what they've done without him on the floor and with him on the floor and you, know, you just look at the record and and you get that impression but it really you know it, the, the the guys on the perimeter i think have to really appreciate the fact that the opposing defenses have to figure out you know are we going to deal with yoli or not if they don't then he has a big day and if they do then uh, the shooters get a lot more open shots and that's a big reason why byu you know shot the ball so well from three-point range Ken, you've seen BYU play in person a couple of times this year. How would you explain them to somebody that hasn't seen them? Uh, well, uh, they're a really fun team to watch, uh, certainly from the offensive standpoint. The offense is just really dynamic with, uh, you know, usually three guys on the floor that uh, can handle the ball like uh, a point guard pretty much and can all shoot it at an elite level. Um so when you start with that, uh, you're just going to have a good offense regardless of who else is on the floor. But then, you know, you throw in a, a guy like Childs who uh, is a, a really interesting player from the standpoint that he may not be uh, the most vertical player, the most bouncy player, I guess. But, you know, he's very good at finishing around the rim. You know, he's just got a number of tricks. He's very skilled in terms of getting the ball to the rim and, and uh, has a nice touch. And uh, so – Offensively, it's uh, it's a very fun team to watch, and you know as we as we pointed out, defensively a little more limited, but uh, it's a team that can clearly uh, go pretty far just with his offense alone. You always played three of the top four teams in the country in net. That lines up with uh, your rankings as well as well in Kansas, Gonzaga, and San Diego State. BYU 0, 0 for three in those games. They'll get a shot at Gonzaga. Do you have an opinion outside of your numbers? Do you think Kansas is the best team because your numbers say that, or do you also think that? I do also think that, yeah, there's, there's not really a, I mean, who would be that challenger, I guess. You could maybe throw San Diego State in there or Baylor, and those are, are worthy challengers. Uh, Duke, I think, would be in that mix, but Kansas just seems to be like a, a step ahead right now, you know, 10-1 and one in the Big 12, which is still uh, maybe not as good of a conference as we've seen the last three or four years, but still a really good conference. I have it ranked second uh, in the country among conferences, so a 10 and one mark, which includes two wins over West Virginia is pretty impressive. You know, just the road loss to Baylor so far and their other two losses are, uh, you know, one point road loss to Villanova and then the, the season opener, a two point loss against Duke on a, on a neutral floor. So uh, the resume is as good as you'll see. And I just think the way they're playing in the big 12 play is uh, about as, as good as we've seen this year as well. It's just a team that depends on its defense a little bit more. They played a slow pace. So it's really you know, an ugly brand of basketball. It's not something that's appealing to the <laughs> eye, but the results uh, the results are pretty good, fellas. So I don't think the fans mind too much. Yeah, not not quite like the enjoyment of watching BYU play, that's for sure. Uh, Ken, how's the website traction during this February frenzy of college basketball? Uh, it's pretty good. You know, I can't complain at all about that. It's, uh, the people are, are interested in my work for usually, you know, maybe not complimentary all the time, but they are interested, and so... Uh, <laughs> So uh, bad publicity is, is publicity, I guess. No, I don't know. It, it's, you know, it's always going well. I'm always thankful for uh, the fact that uh, people do care about my work. That's uh, more than I could ever imagine when I started the site. So, uh, so it's pretty cool this time of year to see how many people are interested in it. KenPalm.com if you want to get in on that and go next level. Great to talk to you, my friend. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Ken Palmer on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why, we show how. I go to his website literally every, every day. Every day. Literally every day. Yes. Uh, once we turn New Year's and we're digging in hard. It's it, That's one of the metrics the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee uses to evaluate teams. So that's awesome. That's and like BYU. the ultimate validation, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when your rating matters, like we're paying attention to Someone's that. going, yeah. 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 I, I look forward to that one day with this show. Coming up. <laughs> 
Jonathan Tavernari, bound to say something awesome. Mm-hmm. Is he packing his bags for the Sweet 16, Jerem? Oh, We're going to go there. This is BYU Sports Nation. Saturday, Shannon Evans and the 16th-ranked BYU Gymnastics team host Boise State. Yeah, Boise! Watch it on BYU TV, 9 Eastern time. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. We are live in Studio B. It is a game day for BYU men's and women's basketball. All night! Uh Uh-huh. And it is time for the Cougar Whip Around. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Football. BYU junior linebacker Chaz Ayu was arrested February 9th and charged with suspicion of DUI. Ayu recorded 31 tackles, one sack, one interception, had a forced fumble for the Cougars in 2019. Men's basketball. BYU at LMU tonight. Weather's better there than it is pretty much everywhere in the country, but we don't really care because basketball's happening indoors. Pre-game on BYU Radio at 10 Eastern. Join Jerem Jordan for that. BYU won the first matchup in Provo by 25, giving up only 38 points. The Billustrator, Jay Billis of ESPN, has BYU as a, quote, sweet 16 contender for the NCAA tournament. He ranks them 28th out of 68 potential tourney teams Two spots ahead of St. Mary's, just one behind Houston. Women's basketball. The ladies host St. Mary's tonight, as mentioned, uh, on BYU TV. The Cougars won the first match of January 18th, 65-55. BYU tied San Diego for second in the league. Three weeks from today, the start of the West Coast Conference Tournament. So every game matters. Cougars in pro hoops. Eric Mika recorded another double-double yesterday. 19 points, 11 rebounds for the Stockton Kings in a win over the Raptors 905. Mika and Stockton take on the Delaware Bluecoats tonight at 7 Eastern. Tennis. A lot of information here. Brace yourself. The men's tennis team plays at UNLV today. That's it. The end. That's all I okay. By the way, uh, Matt Norlander just tweeted out a video of Cosmo from 98 being thrown and dunking from the three-point line. 98! It goes back 22 years. We thought it was 2001. That was a video we showed on the Pope Show the other day. Granted, the three-point line the three point line was a little bit closer back then. It's all relative. Rules change, <laughs> right? Cosmo dunked from the three-point line in 98. Outstanding. Wow. He's been doing it forever. Yeah, I'm glad How old is okay. that dude that was in the Cosmo suit now? Mark Pope mentioned he wanted to get in the Cosmo suit. And dunk from the three-point anyway, I'm guessing he that, does not want I'm to guessing be that guy is in his early 40s. Yeah. It's crazy. I hope your knees are okay, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> whoever you are, Brother Johnson. Our question of the day, is BYU a Sweet 16 contender? Why or why not? What are we doing? At Timoteo Mitchell on Twitter says, <laughs> BYU is a Sweet 16 dark host, horse rather with intriguing possibilities. Gavin Baxter is the wild card. Can he rebound and protect the rim? Can he, Can he play a, more than three minutes? A lot of throwdowns off the pick and Go. roll. Offensive rebounds. If BYU hits their threes, if Yoli Yolis and Gavin shines, they can make serious noise. Remember, Gavin Baxter last year against LMU at home had a 25-10. and 10. This was the opponent that he absolutely crushed. It'd be fun if Gavin Baxter got in and we saw him kind of get rid of his sea legs at some point here. I imagine it's going to take a couple games. Remember BYU at the beginning of the season? It just took a minute. Remember how long it took Yoli Childs? It took him like 20 seconds. But for He's a, a different for beast. him, the, the curve was different. He wasn't coming off of an injury, though. He was just waiting to play. Gavin is different, right? Uh, Yoli came off an injury and had like a 28 and uh, okay. 12 or whatever. Touche. Touche. Yeah. yeah. Three Shea. For, yeah, exactly. Okay, coming up. And one picks for the LMU game. Uh, and Jonathan Tavernari sometimes has opinions. What's his opinion on BYU as a Sweet 16 contender? This is BYU Sports Nation. What are we doing? Sweet, why are we saying Sweet? What are we doing? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The ball night in L.A. for the men's basketball team, winners of nine of the last ten against LMU. Listen to the pregame on BYU Radio starting at 10 Eastern time. Muito bang. Hey, joining us in Studio B. Portuguese. Is Jonathan Tavernari, who knows a thing or two about Portuguese and like 10 other languages. Uh, how many languages do you speak at this point, Jonathan? Four. Uh, okay. Four working on my fifth. <laughs> What's the fifth? Uh, French. French. So, yeah, very but nice. it's not going very well. Uh, <laughs> oh. yeah, I can read it. Yeah. I can read it and I can understand it. Oh. But the pronunciation, it's almost as if it has its own type of 
you know, and so the pronunciation is very much different. I mean, everybody says that Latin languages are the same, but it's Spanish, Portuguese. Yeah, French. which I, you know, I speak those in Italian as well. And so um, mm. a lot of people uh, say that I don't speak English. So, but there's that. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> why are you guys laughing? <laughs> hey, I speak English very well. I know you right? do. You Get better. both of you, go somewhere else, and make <laughs> make the talent laugh on that TV like Agreed. I make y'all laugh. Agreed. Sheesh. No, no argument there. Perception is reality, and reality is I make you guys laugh yes. a lot. Cole Language. Sensitivo. I'm sensitive. I'm, just I'm very sensitive. Don't touch me. I'm sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Language specialist Jonathan Tabernard with Listen, us had on I, BYU Sports Nation. Had I been like poked in the eye like you were against Pepperdine back in the day, yeah. maybe that set something off. Right? Well, that was such a crazy play. And I still made shots to win the game afterwards. Just don't forget to mention that. So <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot in that uh, non-conference well, game. Yep. You, as a man who have played at BYU and been on tournament teams and been in these pressure situations and dealt with the hype and here we, here we go. been one of those teams that has been <laughs> dubbed as, oh, a dark horse, a potential dark horse. Jay Billis comes out today, has BYU number 28, in his 68-team NCAA tournament right. power rankings, has the Cougars as a Sweet 16 contender. Are you Blue buying or selling on this, JT? Um, you know what? I will say this. Um, if BYU gets there, it's because they are somewhat of a Cinderella uh, you know, team coming in, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with being the Cinderella team that makes a run. But I think there's one reason and one reason why that he said that. And let's see if you two knuckleheads know why he said that. Why do you think he said that? The way BYU is shooting the ball is unbelievable. Right? Yes. Yeah. Three-point shooting. Absolutely. It's, and, it's overall shooting, too. And the reason why is because when you're the best three-point shooting in the country, it, you're going to make shots. I mean, it's funny that we're now talking about this. I said at the beginning of the season, I said, if these guys shoot 42% or better from three, this is going to be a really good season. And right? And sitting at 42%, by the way. 42.6%. And here they are shooting at that, and lo and behold, right? So I guess I shouldn't be on timeout anymore because <laughs> of my, you know, we're not talking about the next two games, by the way, <laughs> because the last time we did, you guys didn't have me on the show for a week because I was on timeout, right? But um, I do, what I do think is if there's a team that you don't want to see in a tournament, and now the experts are saying all of this, it is BYU. Uh, Fran is a good friend of mine, uh, Fran from Schiller, um, he said that as well. And I think the reason is why you literally have six, seven guys that come in and can shoot the ball. I never had the privilege, right? Um, you would shoot for those guys. Well, yeah. right. But, you know, I also made enough for those guys. And, <laughs> but the thing is, the teams that I played on, with the exception of, like, maybe two or three guys that were lights out, we never had guys that – six, seven guys that come in on the court and knock down three-pointers. I mean, most of my three-pointers in my career was because of Trent Plasted, Kenny Young, Chris Myers, Brandon Davies, Noah Hartsock, a lot of pick and pops with Jimmer and with the point guards, Ben Murdoch and so forth. Um, Lee off the post. But with this team, my goodness, you got TJ, you got Alex, you got Jake, you got – Yoli, I mean, Kobe can knock down if he's wide open. Connor Zach Harding. Sellius. Connor, yeah. Zach, Dalton. You know what I mean? I think the only guy on this time, you know, that we're going to see if he gets in a rotation or not is Gavin. That's not a three-point specialist. But, again, you double down on Yoli we get when Gavin's on the court, and then Gavin's just going to dive down, and he's going to get a dunk or skip the ball to an open three. So I'll say that I'll buy it because of the three-point, you know, the, the, the three-point thing that BYU got going on right now. And we were talking about the role of seeding um, and how important that is, right? If BYU gets in the 8-9, oh, it's just the worst, right? So is, that, is the seeding going to be everything? Because you want to avoid a one seed in the second round. Right. Well, what I'll say this, um, and I was watching the show uh, when Coach Rose was here, and something that he said that kind of gets forgotten a lot. What does it, it – you need to understand, BYU is not Duke. BYU is not North Carolina. Or Kansas. I know. So, they have to go to class here. So, well, uh, besides that. But what are the expectations for the basketball program? Well, those guys is win a national championship. What is the expectation that you have it here? Win a game. Get to the tournament. Win a championship. Win. win a conference championship. Win a conference tournament championship. Consistently be ranked throughout the year. Go to the NCAA tournament. And win a game. And win a game. Hold on, I disagree he, with that. And he said he would that. take one of those. He right. said he would take one of those. And that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my point. When we and I said this the other day. Um, if you look at from my freshman year until the year after Jimmer graduated, so that would be eleven twelve. So from 2000, uh, 2006 
to 2012. Those are the best six years statistically on BYU basketball history. Why? Because we consistently got in the top 25. We consistently won championships. We consistently went to the NCAA tournament. Now, there were a special season with Jimmer that happens every 20, 30 years when a Danny Ainge or a Jimmer for that or a Crashing Mercosa type of player comes around, right? But fans, like Coach talked about, oh, they just want to be the number one team in the country and everything is great. Fans, perception is reality, right? Sometimes you have to push through it, right? Sometimes you just, you know, it's, you, you can't just be content with just, oh, we just beat a team. You know, you got to make sure that you get through it. And, so for this team to be special, what I'll say is accomplish one of those things, right? And, and I think that they're on par to do that. I really do. Yeah, and, and the most likely, obviously, is uh, winning the NCAA tournament, right? right? Because Gonzaga wasn't in the Mountain West. If Gonzaga had been in the Mountain West, um, maybe it's a closer race. They probably still win the league. But the goal is get to the tourney. And now with this team, it's not just get there. I'd be disappointed if they got there and lost. I think they need to win a game. Well, I think they're really good. Would you have said that after they lost to Boise State? No, but Would things, you, things evolve. Things yeah. do evolve, where, where and I agree with right you. Yeah. But we're going to go back to when was the last time that BYU went to the NCAA tournament? 2015. Okay, so you got to crawl before you walk and before you run. Not always. Loyola Chicago, when they went to the Final Four, they didn't build up to Okay, that. They just did it in one year. Right? right. And you live off that. It's not always a build. And, I, and I, I agree with you, right? There's every now and then there's the cat, you know, catch lightning in the bottle type of situation. And I agree with you. However. You're always all in with these seven seniors. You got to go out. You and, know and, what I mean? And I understand that. Yeah. You know, uh, it's. A couple of, about, about a month ago, I was at Universal, and they had this new ride, and I was like, I want to go. But I couldn't go because somehow they now make rides for six-foot people that weighed 150 pounds. <laughs> and I happen to be 6'6", six, six, about 250, 260. Buddy of mine, Jeff Nelson, says, JT, sometimes you just got to go for it. And I sit down, and he just shoved that thing down to me. My legs are numb, and I'm like, oh, I'm great. I'm great. I'll go to the ride. And, but the thing is, they are all in with these seniors, and you're right about that. Um, I just hope that Cougar Nation knows that if they get to the NCAA tournament but don't win a game, that's not the end of the world. It's still a good season. Because it's a very great sure, season. Sure, and I, I understand. They're good enough and to I win. understand yeah. that we are all in with these seniors, and you're just shoveling it down. And I mean, personally, and again, and I mentioned this on Twitter. There is the Gavin side. There's the Mark Pope side, and then I'm going to give you my side. I'm looking at it as a basketball player. I would never burn my red shirt here. Gavin is his own man. I talk to him, and he, he knows me. I've known him for a long time. He's like, JT, you can tell me to, you know, you can tell me whatever. I'll never get offended by you. But he understands where I'm coming from. But his perspective was, hey, this is a special team. Let's do something special. I also understand Mark Pope's perspective, uh, side. Hey, this is a guy that can be the backbone of my program for the next four years, right? So there's all of these different perspectives you have to consider. But I agree with you. It's a special, show. It's a special team. They're going to go all in on it. Um, I just want people to understand if they just get the second seed in regular season, if they don't win the tournament in Las Vegas, but they do get to the NCAA tournament, that this should be considered a very good special season, right? And we're talking about, well, what is a special season? Well, obviously, if you bring up the Elite Eight with Danny Ainge or Jimmer Sweet 16, for BYU standards, that's beyond special, right? That is, you know, almost like, you know, a, a celestial. Yeah, magical. A magical season, right? But if you really think about the six years that, you know, my, my four years and then two years after and so forth, those were unique times. Those were special seasons because we're constantly good. And I think that this team, like you said, things evolve. They're constantly being good. They're on the brink of being ranked in a quite long time, which also is something that's very special. Jonathan Tavernari with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, let's close with this. Um, who's the real MVP of this BYU team? Unselfishness. And I'll say that. Why? Because these guys like each other. They like being around each other. They praise each other publicly. There's a thing about you praising people publicly, but behind the doors, like, man, I can't stand, you know, I can't stand Spencer. Like, oh, I can't stand Jeremy. I'm like, you know, earlier in the show, we were trying to get you off the show. I'm like, hey, let's just do this in Portuguese, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but these guys like each other. The coaches got them to buy. And I think my wife says it all the time. It's the Mark. It's Mark Pope's magic. Mm. It's the genius of Mark Pope. 
you get them to buy in and being unselfish. Because let me tell you, it's extremely hard. You come in as a transfer as a, a transfer grad, and you're the star, and you're the MVP of your conference, and you come in and you buy into it. You're the senior star about to win the senior award in the, in the nation, and you're sharing the ball. You transfer from Arizona. You have a lot of things to prove. You are the guy that starts on every single game that you've played in your career. So the real MVP of this team, I would say it's Mark Pope's geniuses in buying these guys to be unselfish. No and that, and hidden that's, agendas. That's why we bring you on the show, because you have unique takes. And because awesome. I know what I'm talking about, and I just don't look good wearing BYU stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, I, I know, I'm sorry. It's true, though. <laughs> Thanks, JT. He's headed to go hoop. Yeah, let's go. Coming up, who gets today's rise and shoutouts? Plus, our and one picks for BYU at LMU tonight. It's ball night. This is BYU Sports Nation. Ball! This segment of BYU Sports Nation presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. You can always subscribe, rate, and review the show wherever you get your podcasts. It's just out of control, and I love it. Uh, Someone DM'd us and said, put him back in timeout. (laughs) Show is also available on demand. You have the BYU TV and BYU radio podcast uh, apps. By the way, all the deep blues are on the BYU TV app now and BYUTV.org slash deep blue. So if you want to watch those, they're on YouTube as well. Uh, but it's a show on the BYU TV app as well if you'd like to consume all them. Fantastic content. Yeah, Most recently, TJ Haas, an emotional piece. Really cool access he granted uh, to our team. Yeah, great stuff. It's time for our and one picks. Picks, predictions, and one. On BYU Sports Nation. Presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Going head-to-head here, Jerem. My two-pointer for BYU at LMU tonight. I think BYU will make nine or more three-pointers. And one. BYU will have a two-to-one assist-to-turnover ratio as a team. Okay. That one's, a, that one's a little bit aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, BYU will make nine or fewer three. Okay. Uh, you're... you're countering me on this one. I, I think BYU is going to get at the rim a little more tonight. They've made 10 plus 5 in a row. 14 total this, this year. So, yeah. They don't need to make more than 9 to beat LMU. You'd think. So, yeah, you may be right there. Give us some of that! And one! LMU will score 60 plus. They only scored 38 in front. 38 points. I think they're going to score 60 plus. But it's going to be close. They're going to score in 60 plus. Okay. And LMU's not a high scoring team, but they're on their home field tonight. BYU will the mid 70s. Ooh, okay. That's not an official pick. Scoreboard right now, Jerem up 5, 37-32. Like I said, we need to go head-to-head on some of these. I'm running out of opportunities, Jerem. Basically, you don't have to think about your picks. You can just counter mine. I'm, I'm running out of opportunities. <laughs> well, again, I can't trade buckets with you, right? Like, if you keep you trade, getting yours and I'm getting mine, I'm never going to catch up. You can trade. Yeah, you can't trade threes for ones or threes for twos in this. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't count. I I got to take risks. You know what? It's about time. Hopefully it, <laughs> hopefully it pays <laughs> off tonight. Our question of the day. You can answer it on vote.byutv.org. Is BYU a sweet 16 contender? Here why or why not? At commando.carry on Instagram says, why not? BYU has some really talented players. A little luck, favorable seed and bracket. I think they have a solid chance. Hashtag BYUSN. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Taylor underscore Ward on Instagram. BYU has already proven they can contend with top 16 teams. And with Gavin Baxter back, they're only that much more dangerous as an underdog. Yeah, contend with is different, right? Top 16 teams. BYU is 0-3. So in what way have they contended again? They played a close game with San Diego State. But they the Sweet 16 game. won't be the best 16 teams in the net rankings. Right. It's, it's a team like Houston. Which is going back yeah. to what uh, the, the first response I read, which is from Commando Carey. Little luck, favorable seed, and bracket. It's about matchups well, yeah. and seeding. You better hope the other team doesn't have luck, too. Today's rise and wow. shout-outs. Jeremy, you're up first. Mine goes to Sailor Ong, BYU Women's Ultimate Frisbee. She had a Callahan. I learned what this was. So if Whoa. you catch the disc in the opponent's end zone, you get a point. Recently, this happened in Charlotte, North Carolina. Bang! The tip, the interception in the end zone, right? Against number six, Tufts. BYU lost the game, but that was a great play. Look at the, look at the bench. Empty for Sailor Ong, Ultimate Frisbee, BYU. Awesome. Did a drone shoot the highlights for yeah, this game? Yeah, look at that. Cool, right? <laughs> 
That's really cool. Yeah, awesome. My rise and shout-out goes to T.J. Haas. He just mentioned it, the access he gave uh, in a really important moment in his life as his first son was born. Like, yeah. That was that hit home for me. It really emotional. We can do that. Great stuff. Our thanks to today's guests, the always opinionated Jonathan Tavernari and college basketball stats guru Ken Palmer. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, you would have brought no value to the program, so we didn't have any. Wow. Okay. He knows. Hashtag BYUSN to join the conversation for Jeremiah Spencer. Shout out to Logan Magnuson. Go Cougs. Ball night. <laughs>